What's going on everybody? It's MJ from Bamjack Computers and this is a reflow procedure that was performed on an HP Pavilion DV7. Comes into the shop with power no video, taking the computer apart and heating up the graphics set so that the thermal compound can reset and get video. As you can see this is an HP Pavilion DV7 and when I hit the power button here you'll see the power light come on but there is no video on the screen. We'll give it a minute just to make sure. Alright, so nothing's coming up. So we're going to shut it down. And we'll flip this guy over. Pop the battery out. I'll show you the complete model number here in a second. There it is. It's the DV74177NR. I didn't get very good video of that. I apologize. Alright, so here we go again. Pop the battery. remove the cover I'm gonna speed this up a little bit remove the hard drive move the memory the wireless card and take out every screw in the back every screw you see has to come out keep them in order so that you can get it back together there are some that are a little bit different sizes there's some flat ones that go underneath the battery and then over there on the CD-ROM I should say DVD-ROM this one was a little harder to take apart. Um, some of the screws didn't want to come out. But we get to it. And they are all out, so we'll flip it back over. We'll pop the keyboard out. There are two screws here. I miss one. I got in a little bit of a hurry. You'll see my faux pas here in a minute. Get it apart. Just kind of work it. I found out that the other side is a little bit easier to come apart for the start. So work your way around. Don't force it. It'll come eventually. You just got to find where the divots are. There is that one. And hey, guess what? You forgot a screw. There you go. All right, then you've got uh, a couple ribbon cables you need to remove once you get it all loose. And there's that one for the power button. There's that one, that one, and then the touchpad one. Now, it, you do have to be careful because the LCD is really heavy, so if you leave it leaning back too far, it's going to fall over. There's the power. There's another ribbon cable there. The sound, I believe. Unplug your fan. And there's two screws located on the bottom side of the board you got to take out. And then your board will pop right out. There we go. All right, once you got the board isolated, you're going to have to remove the heat sink and fan. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then we have exposed the processor, which with the half turn there pops right out. Um, this one you can see the battery. Uh, this one had eventually, evidently been taken apart before the CMOS battery is. Um, kind of held on with the uh, tape so that's what you're seeing there all right there's the graphics chip chip right there and what we're going to do is we're going to take this flux and we're going to drip it down in there and you can see right here when i drip it it just kind of like it goes down in there we're using a, a solder flux and i usually put three drops in let it settle in there and then we're going to grab my heat gun and we're going to put heat on it and we're going to hold the heat for about three minutes Start off slow, and then eventually move it move it closer until you can see the thermal flux will start to bubble off. It'll start to, because basically what it's doing is it's melting the thermal compound, and you'll see it here in a minute. There it goes. So that's allowing the thermal compound that's underneath that graphics set, which you can't really remove, and it allows it to 
basically melt and then reseed again. So that'll allow it to pull the heat off of the graphics processor. That's an ATI chipset, by the way. All right. Once that is done, we can start the reassembly. And again, I held that on low setting for about three minutes. Yeah. All right, so there we go. Let's start to reassemble. Your graphics set is going to need some new thermal compound. And I put the little heat shield back on there. And then reseat your processor. Give it the little half turn with the flathead screwdriver. Make sure that your Oh, you want a thermal compound about the size of a grain of rice on that processor. Don't put too much. A lot of people make that mistake. They put way too much. Um, make sure everything's lined up. And then tighten her back down. Make sure you plug your fan in. Don't forget that. That's important. Had a little bit of trouble with that one, but I got it. All right. Board goes back in. Same way she went out. You kind of hold it in and wedge it in. That works the best. Got your little sound cable there on the bottom. I'm sliding that in there now. Got a ribbon cable there. Power uh, to the DC jack is on the bottom. I have a little bit of trouble with that. And then there's uh, another ribbon cable on the top. Plug in the uh, LCD. Two screws on the bottom of the board. I just like to make sure everything's connected and give it a good look over. Don't get in too much of a hurry with these. All the ribbon cables, your screws back in, wireless card, memory, keyboard, and then all the screws. If you've kept them in order, it should be pretty easy to figure out. All right, once we get all the screws in, replace the hard drive, CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, and the battery. 
Just taking a look there to make sure everything's good. There was one extra right in the middle. There's a wireless card. Pop that in. Pop the DVD-ROM in. Secure that with a screw. And then your hard drive. Make sure she's connected. Screw her down. Put your cover back on. And then pop your battery in. And once that's all done, we will try to power it up and see if we get video. Power button. And it's going to give you a warning screen first. Um, it's just saying that the you know the CMOS checksum is invalid because it's been reset. That's no problem. Hit enter to reboot it. And what we see next is the HP splash screen and then loading into Windows.